The first step in using Genmetric is to create a database. You only need to create one database because it may contain multiple data tables. After you create the database, and each time you start Genmetric, you must open the database that you would like to use. Once the database is open, you can import any number of data tables into the database. The types of files that you can import are any kind of delimited file that have a comma, tab, semicolon, or colon as a delimiter. A delimited file must contain 1,024 or fewer variables, but there is no limit to the number of rows. Data are permanently stored in the database until you manually delete the table. When creating your data file and importing it into Genmetric, you must follow certain naming conventions. Table names are limited to 120 characters, and variable names are limited to 20 characters. Both table names and variable names can only use the characters A through Z, 0 through 9, and the underscore character. To create a database in Jmetric, go to the Manage menu and select New Database. Type a name for your database and press the Create button. This action creates the database, but it does not open it. To open a database, go back to Manage and select Open Database. With the database open, I can begin to import data. You can import multiple data sets into the same database. After importing data into Jmetric, you must provide item scoring information before you can begin using any of the measurement related features. You can provide item scoring information either through command scripts or through the dialogues. There are two dialogues that you can use for item scoring. There is basic item scoring and advanced item scoring. This short video will show you how to use the advanced item scoring dialog to provide item scoring information. To apply the scoring to exam 1, I'm going to use the advanced item scoring dialog. In the column labeled option, I'll type all the possible response options for this item. In the column labeled score, I'll assign a score to each response option. Since this test contains only multiple choice items, I'll assign one point for the correct answer and zero points for the distractors. Be sure to click to an empty row after your last entry. Now I will select all the items that have A as the correct answer. I can select multiple items by holding down the control key on a PC.
after pressing submit to enter the key for those items, I can now provide the key for other items. This item scoring indicates that B is the correct answer. I will select all the items that have B is the correct answer. I will continue repeating these steps until I've provided the scoring for all the items on my test. Now that I have provided the scoring for all of the items, I need to press the OK button to enter all my values into the database. To verify that the scoring was successful, click the Variables tab and look at the column labeled Scoring. It contains two sets of parentheses. The first set lists the response options, and the second set lists the score values assigned to each option. This should match the values you entered in the Advanced Item Scoring dialog. Exam 2 is an example of a test that contains nothing but polytomous items. You provide the item scoring information for polytomous items the same way you do for binary items. Go to Transform, Advanced Item Scoring. The possible response options are the values listed in the database. For exam 2, the response options are 0, 1, 2, and 3. The score assigned to each of these options is the same. 0, 1, 2, and 3. All of the items have the same scoring. And so I just select all of those items when choosing the scoring. Now exam 2 is ready to be analyzed. An advantage of using the advanced item scoring is that you can provide multiple correct answers to a multiple choice item and you can easily collapse categories for a polytomous item. For example, let's suppose that after doing my item analysis I realize that item 1 has both A and C as the correct answer. I can change the key for item 1 by going back to transform, advanced item scoring, list all the response options and then indicate that both A and C should be scored as one point with B and D receiving zero points. Now if an examinee has selected either A or C they will get credit for that response. Collapsing categories for polytomous items is just as easy. Here I select exam 2 because it contains polytomous items. I'll go to transform, advanced item scoring, and list the response options. Let's suppose that I want to combine 2 and 3 into the same category. That is, I want to collapse 3 down to a 2. I do that by assigning the same score value to both option 2 and 3. It's also easy to reverse score polytomous item. Again, I list the options. And to reverse score it, I simply start 
the scoring at the highest value. It is best practice to always start your item scoring at zero points. This is actually a requirement when you use the item response theory methods in JMetric.